Hello, friends. Welcome to this special Repro Film mini podcast episode as part of our Films for Thought partnership with WISP, a company that specializes in female focused online reproduction and sexual health treatment. We've partnered with WISP to present a Repro Film movie night on college campuses across the US. At Repro Film, we believe in conversation and filmmaking as a vehicle for sparking change. And I am so excited to be presenting these interviews with some brilliant filmmakers. Today, I'm speaking with Cinda Aga, the director of Birth Control, Your Own Adventure. Cinda is a BAFTA-winning and Emmy-nominated director and writer working in film and TV. Birth Control, Your Own Adventure was distributed by the New York Times. And this was Cinda's first film, which also went viral with 12.5 million organic views and was nominated for a 2019 News and Documentary Emmy. You know, no big deal. Most recently, Cinda wrote and directed the BAFTA-winning comedy series How to Be a Person, shown on Channel 4 in the UK. Her work as a writer, producer and director has been seen on Netflix, BBC, The New Yorker, Vox, The Atlantic, MTV and more. Birth Control Your Own Adventure is a stop-motion short film featuring Icelandic sheep, clumsy endives and an OBGYN who talks with the voice of a robot. Cinder uses these creative tools to chronicle her struggle with the side effects of birth control medication, where she was often forced to choose between depression and physical pain. Yikes. There are numerous relatable moments for many audiences who have taken various forms of birth control over the years, and it begs the question, is it really possible to control your own adventure or even health outcomes when it comes to taking birth control? Here's Cinder Aga to discuss all of this and more. Cinder Aga, welcome to the Repro Film Podcast. It's great to be speaking with you today. Um, I'm a huge fan of your work and I love the way that you infuse your creativity with these really powerful messages and necessary and timely messages too. So let's talk about the idea for Birth Control Your Own Adventure. How did it come about? When did you start making it and why did you make this film? Thank you so much. That's very sweet of you. And I didn't set out intending to make a short film at first. It was just keeping a diary for myself of my experiences. I don't even think I realized I was keeping a diary, but over the course of the year of playing um, birth control roulette, I was writing about a lot of these experiences because I think they felt so unreal to me that documenting them was just a way to to validate what I was going through for myself. And at the same time, I was getting really into doing random still life photography with different medical objects and things I was getting from Walgreens and CVS or things my doctor gave me. Mm-hmm. And I started to realized that there was like a story I was trying to tell around my experiences with reproductive health and there was clearly a visual language emerging as well. I honestly just got this idea to make a short film out of it when I got a, it's not a very romantic story, but when I got a Facebook ad for a fellowship with Sundance called Sundance Ignite, which was for emerging filmmakers. And I'd always wanted to do filmmaking, but I didn't pursue it. Um, It wasn't my career path at the time. And I don't know, just some sort of stroke of inspiration hit me and I decided I was going to make a short film. I had about, I think it was four days until the deadline for the fellowship. So I was coming through this writing and realized, oh, there's there's like a monologue here. Um, And I was looking at the photography I'd been doing and I was like, and there's a a visual style here. I think I combine these things. And I had a friend with a camera and his mom let us use her living room and I had a little bit of money to go spend at the dollar store to buy a bunch of random props and we just borrowed a lot of things and we ended up setting up this tabletop setup and we shot the film for two days and then we edited it for two days didn't really sleep and then we just turned it in and I sort of didn't look back I didn't think anything would happen necessarily but I ended up getting the fellowship And I equally just sort of randomly, one of my older sisters saw that the New York Times had this series called Op Docs. And she was like, why don't you submit your film there? 
So it was just some like open email on, that they have online. I sent it off um, one Friday night when I was just sitting at home bored. And again, didn't really expect anything to happen. But to my surprise, replied the next week and said they'd like to publish it. So the film went online and that's how, you know, I've, most people saw it. It went viral. It got it, it was back when people still watch things on Facebook Watch and it got like 12 million views. Wow. And so it was just this very surreal experience that started in my, literally in my bedroom, just like writing late at night and doing these simple photographs uh, around the house. And it just blended into this whole thing that was much, much bigger than me, which was really cool. It's such a great filmmaker story. And especially for people who are aspiring filmmakers and listening to this, like you just never know where creativity is going to come from and don't ever count out any sort of random idea that could be the thing. So I love that story. That's really cool. And for folks who did not grow up in the 90s, I definitely did. I'm assuming the title is a play on words of the famous Choose Your Own Adventure book series. Am I correct with that? Honestly, I named it very quickly. I wanted to call it Control, but the lovely, very intelligent editors of the New York Times were like, that's not really a searchable name so I also threw out birth control your own adventure and they were like yeah let's do that one that's that's easy to look up and I've always had this thing I've always wanted like a really kind of mysterious one word title for my films and then the people who are making things grab attention online are always like let's go with a long title so it's funny how you can like for me, and I almost never name things first and name them at the end and it's often like a rushed thing and then later I'm like, oh, yeah, the name is forever. Like, you have to say that forever. Um, but, yeah, it was definitely like a, a choose your own adventure. I mean, I felt I had no idea who I was going to be whenever I was trying one of these new forms of birth control. And each person I became felt completely mm. unfamiliar to me. So it felt like a choose your own adventure, although really it, there wasn't that much choice in it. It's like that juxtaposition of with the books where you would determine the outcome based on which page you flip to and then you know with birth control you're choosing but you're not because you don't know who this per version or you could end up being yeah and I want to get to that in a minute but for many of the college students who will get to watch your film as part of our films for thought series um, in this collaboration with WISP birth control sex periods mental health and everything in between are issues that they deserve to know much more about and have a lot of education about as much as possible. So what kind of education were you given at the start of your birth control journey? And perhaps this is part of why you made the film. Like, were you given all the information or was it just, here, take this, it's going to be great. See ya. Yeah, yeah, none. I don't think, I don't remember anyone even ever telling me that there were side effects to birth control. Besides that, my because I went on it pretty young. And the only thing I remember is them being like, your skin will probably also clear up. But I don't remember anyone mentioning any negative side effects. And I certainly don't, I was never told that it could cause any psychological side effects. So, which is now really almost not funny, sad, but I'm, I'm just like, well, hormones regulate so much about our mood, our personality, our ambition, our drive. And the idea that a hormonal medication wouldn't do that just doesn't make any sense. Even when I was really certain that this is what was happening, and even when there finally was substantial research to back it up, they finally started studying this on a wide scale. I think in like 2018, they did a study of a million Danish, I might have the year wrong, but a million Danish women um, over the age of 14, seeing the psychological impacts of birth control and they found correlations between hormonal birth control use and wide slew of mental health conditions, including depression. And so even armed with that, going into the doctor's office and being like, they found a link with a huge population of women between taking hormonal birth control and having mental health conditions. Even then doctors would be like, no, it's not possible. It's just not true. You're not, that's not why you're experiencing this all women experience uh, the level of medical gaslighting always kind of takes my breath away in a bad way. <laughs> but yeah, I certainly, I certainly wasn't given any information. And a lot of that has had to come from being my own kind of detective. I feel like that's good advice for anyone starting out on this journey, because you get those packets or whatever form your birth control comes in, you get that super 
thick folded <laughs> piece of paper with all the ingredients and stuff. Who's reading that? Like, let's be real. Yeah. I don't know. It just seems like, oh, maybe this is like a rare list of side effects. But then when my film came out, mm. well, I wasn't expecting, I had no idea that other people shared this experience. And I also still had my email online because it didn't occur to me that I might get like flooded. And it was wonderful to hear from a lot of people, but I was getting hundreds and hundreds of emails of women or even just people who love, you know, love someone who used birth control and really suffered from it, saying that they'd had the same experience. So it's definitely not rare, not a rare experience. Talking about that, with the reactions that you received, what were some of the standout stories or reactions that validated what you went through and, and you know putting this experience on film I remember a woman in her 60s I think she was emailing me wow and telling me that she had gone on birth control when she was younger and she felt so strange a few weeks in that she found herself driving her car up to a bridge and like standing at the edge of the bridge and thinking about jumping off and going to her doctor and saying, like, I think that the pill is doing something to me. And her doctor just being like, there's no chance that's not the pill. And then she went off of it and the suicidal ideation went away. And yeah, those were the hardest stories where people reaching out and saying, like, until they saw my short film, they had this, like, suspicion or this gut feeling that they had been dismissed by the doctor or, you know, just society and so it wasn't until seeing that someone else had had that experience that they felt validated and it was the same thing for me like hearing from all these people validated what I'd gone through and validated that it you know Mm. this this experience wasn't entirely in my head wow to think about a six-year-old woman and the types of birth control that might have been around when she was young Mm -hmm. the trials that they were doing that's terrifying I mean right thank god she's still around to share her story and and connect with you in that way so Mm. Oh, wow. I wanted to go to the animation for a second because that's, that's it's just such a cool way of bringing what is a very serious topic um, into people's lives and, and, and into their computer screens. And why did you decide to use animation and, and how long did it take to make all of that? It was sort of like a style I chose just out of the practicality of it. Like I was doing some photography in that style of like still life for tabletop. And it's just really easy and cheap to do, honestly. I wanted to make this film, but it didn't have any resources to make it. And so the fact that I could just go to the dollar store and buy a bunch of fruit and random little objects and tell the story that way just made a lot of sense for the time. So it's kind of, it's been a cool lesson for me in how a constraint can end up being a real creative asset because I think the style ended up working and resonating for a lot of people. I was also just really interested in how I could give people a sort of visceral experience of my story. And I think that using these objects to create a kind of tactile language, like you see my hand grab an ice cream cone and you know, it kind of sends like a little, I would hope a little bit of a feeling through your body of what that might feel like, or just other things I do in the film with, you know, various fruits that I abused basically to make this. One of the hardest things about my experience was feeling like there wasn't a way I could put into language what was happening in my body and my mind. And that made me feel really isolated. So on a visual level, I wanted to create a a kind of, um, almost make it physically a little contagious for a moment so that people would experience in their body just some of the pain and discomfort I was going through, but not in a way where it's like, you know, really trying to make them suffer. So I tried to use comedy too. But yeah, that was a bit of the intent. And then, yeah, it was made super quickly. Like I said, we had, we made it, we shot it in two days. I just came up with a visual style really fast. I like, I don't know if this is like always the best thing, but I am always really interested in the first idea that like I come up with or that anyone might come up with before their rational mind talks them out of it. And it's like, Oh, that's kind of too weird or that's too personal, too specific, too random, whatever. I mean, that's sort of my favorite stuff. It feels the truest and it feels almost like the most relatable. So I think the pace I made this film at, which like I said was four days when it was all said and done was 
an asset because I didn't have time to question my choices too much or even question like sharing this personal of a story with everybody. And I think if I had sat on it for longer, I would have talked myself out of it um, and told myself it was a bit too weird or too too intimate of a thing to share. I try to remember that. I mean, I think it's also really special to be like have an ongoing process of just making things for no purpose at all. So like the way I was keeping that diary or that log of my experiences and doing creative writing or the way I was doing photography without knowing that these two things would come together and create a film. I think that's consistently stayed my process. So like with other films I've made, I'm often just like always writing without any purpose, like making visuals without knowing what what it'll all amount to. And then later I find myself making a film and I realize that like several years worth of randomness has been seeded into this more coherent piece of art. Sometimes you just got to trust your instinct and go where the moment of inspiration leads you. So exactly. Well, we're definitely seeing more and more birth control users speak up about the many issues they've had over the years. There are more feature documentaries, and many common issues are being talked about. And how do you hope your film will contribute to these ongoing conversations and empower others to speak up? That's a good question. I mean, I didn't make it trying to have any particular impact. And it's not really how I make my work in general, but I'm always really happy when it does have an impact. It's more like if there is something I'm going through that I feel like I shouldn't tell other people about or I can't tell other people about, I've come to trust that that's probably exactly the thing I should write about, the thing I should make a film about. In its conception, it was, oh, pun. <laughs> um, in its conception, I was just like trying to articulate something in me that I had an, an, an impulse to hide from other people. But I definitely, I, feel really inspired whenever I find out that this film is being shared in medical schools or I know there's a really wonderful neuroscience lab at University of Santa Barbara that like is are fans of the film and they also show it to their class of neuroscience undergrads and whenever I hear it's being shared in that setting I feel really happy because I think if there was one thing I could change it would just you know, about this whole system, lots of notes for the pharmaceutical industry. But mm-hmm. outside of that, I just would really love to see women being gaslit less in the doctor's offices and just being believed when they describe um, an experience in their body or in their mind. And if this film and the response to it, because this is just my story and I'm just one person, but I think it's clear from the response to the film that there's a certain universality to my story here. So I hope that that's created a little bit of a shift and more validation for women around um, their experiences. And then eventually, I would love there to be more funding for women's health and research in women's health. And that they, I feel like we still consistently are suffering from just a much lower bar for what passes for good health care for us um, compared to men and yeah. medication given to us that would never even pass trial, you know, clearly like with attempts to create a male birth control, um, never even pass the trial stage where they pull the plug on it. So big, a lot, a big wish list, big old wish list. I don't know how much my films can achieve all of it, but (laughs) um, yeah, lots, lots of love to change. Well, films definitely have the power to change the status quo in a number of ways. And that's what Birth Control, your own adventure is certainly doing it. So congratulations. And it's just great to see the reception you're getting and the conversations it's starting. So thank you for making this film. Before we go, we'd love to learn about what you're working on now or next and where can people follow you? Yeah, I haven't done too much work this year. It was a really exciting year. A uh, series I made in the UK called How to Be a Person won a BAFTA, which is great. There's an episode of that called How to Get an Abortion. Congrats. That's amazing. Thank you. And so that's another reproductive health story that I told recently that I'm proud of. And um, honestly, I had to take a lot of the year out for big medical procedures. I've just been recovering from that. That's still a big part of my life. And uh, I haven't been too generative. I've just been taking care of myself and trying to enjoy life. But that's important. Yes, it's definitely really important. And 
Next, I'm trying to move into long form and hopefully currently writing my first TV show. So hopefully I'll get to make that soon, fingers crossed. And um, you can follow me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is Cinda's. So it's just Cinda with an S at the end. Awesome. Well, I watched that episode of the Channel 4 series. It was so great. Congratulations on that success. And we're excited to see your next project come to life. And we'll definitely be following and and cheering you on. So Cinda Aga, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Thanks so much. If you want to watch Birth Control Your Own Adventure, check it out on the New York Times OpDocs section. If you like what you just heard and want to listen to even more creative conversations with filmmakers, activists, and repro health experts, you can sign up for the free repro periodical at reprofilm.org, where you will receive every episode of the podcast straight to your inbox every month. Thank you to our partners at WISP who offer healthcare on your terms. Check them out at hellowisp.com. The Repro Film Podcast is executive produced by Mama Film, hosted and produced by me, Asha Dyer, edited by Kylie Brown, with original music by Paris Jane and Maurice Anthony. You can find us on social media at Repro Film on Instagram and on our YouTube channel at Repro Film Org. Be sure to share this episode with a friend and help us spread the Repro Film message and mission.